Welcome back to Aurora Tech Channel. Today, I'm going to review the Creality CR10 Smart Pro. This CR10 Smart Pro looks like the CR10S Pro V2's successor combined with the Ender 3S1 Pro and with some extra features. It shares many features with the Ender 3S1 Pro, like the latest Sprite Direct Drive Extruder with a titanium heat break that allows you to print at 300 degrees Celsius, CR Touch Auto Bed Leveling, a 32-bit board, silent stepper drivers, a color touch screen, a PEI spring steel print surface, a LED light, belt tensioners, drawers, and an overall better appearance with clean cable management. It has everything that you can see on the Ender 3S1 Pro. Besides that, it also comes with a larger 300 by 300 by 400 print volume, two extra support rods, support for both Wi-Fi and Ethernet, cloud printing, a full HD camera, auto power off, and some metal part upgrades including the base, the leveling knobs, and the belt tensioner thumb screws. It also comes with three wear-resistant steel nozzles for you to print abrasive filament like nylon carbon fiber right out of the box. It seems Creality is putting all of the best hardware they have into this printer. I would like to thank Creality for sending me this machine to review, and with that, let's get started. We have the base, the gantry, the extruder, the screen, a full HD camera, the filament holder, some tools, and this drawer filled with more tools. As I want to save more time to discuss this printer's pros and cons later in this video, I will just briefly go through the assembly. Start by unscrewing these three screws from the extruder, slide it into place on the gantry, and then secure it using those same screws. Next, put the gantry on top of the base and secure it from the bottom using two screws on either side. Then, Let's install two support rods to provide better support for the tall gantry. It forms a perfect 90 degree angle and it looks good to me. Next, connect the screen cable and slide the screen into place. After that, snap the filament holder on top of the gantry and connect the filament sensor cable. Finally, connect all the other cables. Plug in the power cord and turn on the machine. I will now home the printer, set the Z offset, and then manually level the corners of the bed. After this is done, I will set the Z offset again as the distance between the nozzle and the center of the bed may have changed after adjusting each of those corners. Go to Ready, Manual, and preheat the printer. Feed in some filament until you see some coming out of the nozzle. Now, insert the SD card and let's start our first test print at XYZ Calibration Cube with sample white PLA filament. The result is pretty good. The text is clear, the layers look fine, and the dimensions are accurate as well. Next, let's print one more 3D Benchy with this sample PLA. The result looks okay, but I think the layers could look even better if we use normal PLA and not the sample filament. So, I will print another 3D Benchy using Polymaker Orange PLA. The layers now look much better, the cooling and overhanging all look good, and this print is overall perfect. Then, let's go to Cura and set up this printer profile. We can just use the CR10S Pro V2 profile, and the only thing we need to change is the retraction distance to 0.8 and the speed to 35. Now, I will print this twisted tower model using Hatchbox Purple PLA slice it, and this will take 13 hours and 9 minutes. Click Upload to Creality Cloud, and then wait for it to upload. Once it is finished, 
go to the Creality Cloud website, click My Uploads, and you can see that the G-Code file has been uploaded here, so we can print it using the web interface. After selecting Confirm, the print is supposed to start. However, it just goes to the printer, and I have to click Choose File again, and then the G-Code file will show up here. The printer will preheat, and the print will start after a while. The result is amazing. The details like each of these steps all look great, and you can also hardly see the layer lines. After that, let's print this dragon model using Airy one Black PLA. Slice it, and it will take almost 11 hours. Upload it to Creality Cloud again, open the web interface, and the file is here. This time, I will try to use the mobile app to start the print instead of the web interface. Go to Me, select My Slices, My Uploads, and the dragon is here. Click Choose a Printer, Confirm, and Confirm. There is also a webcam icon here, and we can bring up the Live View window. The print started after a while, and the mobile app seems to work more smoothly. The result turned out fantastic. The layers are very smooth, and even though this brand of filament costs less, there is no discernible difference between it and other more expensive filament brands. Up next, I will print this model of Mount Rushmore with Area 1 Marble PLA, which will take 16 hours and 11 minutes. The end result is great. One of the biggest benefits of this marble PLA is that it helps to conceal the layer lines very well, and when you look at the back of the print, it really does look like marble, or at least has this stony texture that fits the model very nicely. Then, let's print this cute pig using Airy One Rainbow Silk PLA. This will take 5 hours and 35 minutes to finish. The print turned out really nice. The silk PLA makes the model look a little shiny, which is cool, and even though it doesn't hide the layer lines as well as the marble PLA, and it didn't end up with a full rainbow of colors, this is still a pretty good print, and the change from red to a pinkish color looks cool too. Now, using Area 1 White PETG, I will print a crate model. Change the printing temperature to 235 degrees and the bed temperature to 85 degrees, and turn off cooling as well. That is all we need to change. This print will take 11 hours and 13 minutes. Upload it to Creality Cloud and start the print. The result is pretty impressive. Seeing as PETG tends to generate more stringing, this crate has very little of it, and the corners also didn't warp at all. Next, let's print this model of an outdoor automatic waterer with Polymaker ASA. Change the printing temperature to 245 and 95 degrees, and leave cooling off. Slice it, and it will take 8 hours and 34 minutes. As printing ASA needs glue to be applied, I will switch to a smooth PEI sheet instead of the textured one that came with the printer. The prints seemed to start out okay, but unfortunately, the layer adhesion was not very good and the layers didn't stick properly together. 
Normally, when this happens, it means that the temperature isn't high enough. So I will go back and change the nozzle temperature to the maximum recommended temperature, which was 260 degrees, and then try printing this model again. This time, there were no issues and it looks pretty good. The layer adhesion still isn't the best, especially when you zoom in closer, but it is still fairly nicely printed. Following this, I will print a camera holder for this printer using Qi D nylon carbon fiber. First, rotate the model so you don't need to print with support, and then change the printing temperature to 285 degrees and 70 degrees. Leave cooling turned off. Slice this, and it will take 1 hour and 12 minutes. I will keep using the smooth PEI sheet, as the nylon carbon fiber filament also needs glue. This print turned out pretty good. There were no big issues anywhere, and it was definitely functional when I tried using it for the camera. Let's print this model of a fan duct for the CR Tennis Pro V2 with Polymaker Nylon Glass Fiber. We don't need to change any of the settings, so just slice it and it will take 1 hour and 11 minutes. Like the last print, this model ended up looking pretty nice, and it also fit very well on the printer when I tried it out. Finally, I will print a magazine file. This file is almost 320mm tall, so to save some time, I will switch to a 1mm nozzle. I will set the layer height to 0.6mm and the line width to 1mm. Since the hot end needs to melt the filament much faster to print with this larger nozzle, I will increase the printing temperature to 225 degrees Celsius, which is slightly over the recommended range. I think it would be safer to reduce the speed to 30 millimeters per second, but I will try to speed it up using the touch screen if everything seems okay after the print is started. This print will take 10 hours and 45 minutes. It seems the layers and the lines were printed pretty well, even with this one millimeter nozzle. As you can see, these few layers have under extrusion issues as I tried to speed it up to 150% speed, which is 45 millimeters per second. Then, when I slowed it down back to 30 millimeters per second, it printed fine and finished printing in a little less than 11 hours. I used the exact same settings and printed another mini trash can. With this large nozzle, it only takes 1 hour and 7 minutes. This time, I didn't try to push its limits and change the speed in the middle of the print. The result is perfect. So, with a 1mm nozzle at a 0.6mm layer height and a 1mm line width, printing at 30mm per second can get very good results. Let's talk about the pros and cons of this printer, starting with the pros. 1. As the CR series' new flagship printer, it comes with all features you see on other Creality printers, including all the latest features from the Ender 3S1 Pro, and it also added network features like both a Wi-Fi and Ethernet connector, a full HD camera, some extra metal parts like the leveling knobs, the belt tensioner thumb screws, the metal support rods, and a larger print volume. This is the Creality printer with the most complete features so far. Two. The Creality Cloud Printing feature has improved a lot. With the new Creality Print Slicer, it's fully functional and can print directly, monitor the print, and do some print job management from one program. If you prefer using the latest version of Cura 5, the plugin also allows you to upload the G-code file to the cloud and start the print using the web interface or the mobile app. I will talk more about the cloud in the cons section. 
3. It handles printing different materials very well. I printed with PLA, PETG, ASA, nylon carbon fiber, nylon glass fiber, and some special blends like rainbow silk and marble PLA. All of them were printed beautifully. 4. The assembly is easy. Like all other new generation printers, you can put everything together in around 15 minutes or less, and the support rods make the gantry very sturdy. 5. It added another USB-C connector for you to connect to your computer or a Raspberry Pi, which is good. The old CR10 Smart only came with one USB port for the camera. 6. It came with three wear-resistant MK8 steel nozzles that are ready to print with nylon carbon fiber and other abrasive filament. I'm not sure if they are copper alloy plating or electro-coppering hardened steel, as I can't find any information on the official website, but it looks like it is high quality and it is a definite improvement compared to the Ender 3S1 Pro's standard brass nozzle. Now for the cons, which are mainly about the cloud ecosystem and software. 1. The Creality Cloud has improved a lot, but there are still some issues. For example, the mobile app may stop responding once in a while, and you have to quit the app and restart it. The user interface is also flooded with too many things. The main screen shows 3D models, promotions, events, advertisements, and stuff that is unrelated to what users really need, which is to print. I would expect that the app should allow the users to be able to print their files more easily. Two. For computer slicers, you can use Cura, Creality Slicer, which is an older version of a skin Cura, or the new Creality Print. The new Creality Print is functional, but also has some glitches. The camera connection freezes occasionally after one print is finished. I also experienced that the program stops responding when the upload is almost complete, but if you just quit the program and restart it, everything works fine. Sometimes, when I wanted to start a print job from the software, it will keep loading and nothing will actually start. I tried waiting for over 10 minutes, but the print still didn't start. I don't think this is a cloud-related issue, as when I used the web interface and mobile app, this was very unlikely to happen, so it seems that Creality Print is still not very stable. I saw an option inside Creality Print that allows you to print directly to your local network printer instead of using the cloud. However, when I entered the IP address, it just failed to connect for some reason. For users like me who still prefer using Cura, Creality actually has a cloud plugin for the latest Cura version 5, but it's not available on the latest Cura 5 marketplace anymore, so you need to go to their GitHub page, download and unzip the file, and copy it to the Cura plugin folder. This plugin allows you to upload the G-code to the cloud, but it could not start the print directly from Cura, so you still need to open the mobile app or web interface or the Creality print to start it. I think it would be better for the Cura plugin to have an option to let the user select a printer and start the print after uploading. 3. The auto shutdown feature does not work. I confirmed this a few times. Even when I enabled the auto power off feature, the printer won't turn off after the print is finished. I tried waiting for 30 minutes, and although the screen dimmed, the power and the LED light were still on. 4. The touchscreen UI is the same as the Ender 3S1 Pro, but it's just rotated 90 degrees. It's fully functional, and after you spend some time with it, you should be able to find what you need. Unfortunately, some buttons are not that convenient to access. For example, to preheat the printer, you need to click Ready, go to the Manual tab, and then the buttons are here. As the center of the main screen is empty, some shortcuts could be added here. Additionally, the temperature numbers showing on the right side of the main screen are not functional, but even though they will be once the print is started, I think they should work on the main screen as well. As this is a network printer, it should also show the IP address on the screen, but I cannot find it anywhere. As for the hardware, it's actually pretty good, but I would still like to give two suggestions. One. The cable management under the heated bed is not as good as the Ender 3S1 Pro. As you can see, these wires are too close to the leveling knobs, and I was worried that they may get in the way when the bed moved, so I used some tape to secure them. Using the connectors on the Ender 3S1 would be better. This may be the only hardware I found on this printer that is not as good as the Ender 3S1. Two. The textured PEI sheet is nice, but a double-sided PEI with one textured side and one smooth side would be better. 
as there are many printers with double-sided PEI sheets out there, I think this flagship printer should have one as well. When you need to print nylon carbon fiber, ASA, ABS, or any filament that need glue to be applied, a smooth PEI would be better. In conclusion, this is the Creality printer with the most features. The hardware is almost perfect, and you can tell that Creality put in a lot of effort and gave everything they had to this printer. There are still some glitches in the cloud ecosystem, but in terms of printing, it does work. The workflow I personally like is to slice all models I want to print using Cura 5.1, upload the G-code files to the cloud using the Cura plugin, and then using the web interface with a shortcut to directly jump to the device manager, select the printer, and start the jobs one by one. If I need to monitor the print when I walk away from the printers, I can use the mobile app to access the camera or manage the print job if it is necessary. I printed all the test prints using this workflow, except for the calibration cube and the benchies, and it works pretty smoothly. Besides that, this is still an awesome printer. If you are interested, I put the link under the description. That's it for this video. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to receive new video updates. I will see you next time.